There's another look at the scenic countryside around San Antonio. Thanks again to Greg. We've got some very active weather this afternoon. Let's take a look at the map. Yeah, that's going to be a good one to start with. SPC, moderate risk, up around Topeka into southeastern Nebraska. It looks like maybe just southwest of Lincoln. Elevated risk of tornadoes in that area and the other severe parameters, they look elevated as well. So let's zip through this and get familiar with our air mass configuration. A lot of cold air spreading through the Rockies this afternoon. You can see those stout northwesterly wind components getting gusts up near 40 knots in southwestern Wyoming. All of that air spiraling into this low that is pretty much north, I think uh, northeast of Russell. South of that, we've got this dry line extending to about Pratt, Altus, and down towards Abilene. There's the post dry line sector, the continental tropical air, and back behind it, the Pacific air. 66 degree temperature at Albuquerque, that's going to be rather cool. 76 at El Paso, all of that is an indicator of Pacific air coming out of the Rockies. And the tropical air, that's lined up too in East Texas, Eastern Oklahoma, Dew Points, not really all that high, but 66 at Oklahoma City, that's going to be kind of in the moderate range, and very likely low level jet working its way north, kind of like that. The eastern U.S. under high pressure, northwesterly flow up in New England, and looking out there on the west coast. There's that Pacific High part of this large ridge heading up into Alaska. Let's take a look at that. The Aleutians, they've got some bad weather going on in the interior regions, 30s, which is about where we would expect at this time of year. And then out in northern Canada, seeing the reappearance of some of that bitterly cold air, temperatures down to one degree on Banks Island, and it's got a pretty large extent into Hudson Bay and Saskatchewan. Up in Greenland, there's a powerful weather system moving through the interior region. Of course, that is the ice cap area. Nevertheless, strong cold air advection coming into the populated southwestern coast regions and then down there in the Canadian Maritimes another low pressure system moving through Nova Scotia into Newfoundland. With the prospect of severe weather on the Great Plains, we need to start ramping down our scales and start looking at the mesoscale. And we can do that on the Aviation Weather Center webpage. They've got this nice interface. And we can start trying to find out where the boundaries are, for example, such as right here. That's going to be part of that air mass behind the dry line. Temperatures running in the mid 80s and dew points around 20. The dry line itself, hmm, let's try to find that. I think that's going to run about like that. And down into Oklahoma. As far as frontal boundaries, there's probably one right here. That's going to be some of the cold polar air of Canadian origin. And I think that's going to run about like that. But a lot of it is being dominated by the Pacific air moving out of Wyoming, western Colorado, and New Mexico. And the leading edge of that, that appears to be about here. There is some downslope warming going on at some of these stations. But I'm going to go with that for a position. And as we go further to the east, that's where we hit that thermal ridge around Boise City, Guymon, and Elkhart. Then the northern boundary, that's going to run about through I-70 to about Concordia, Salina, and back towards Emporia and maybe Chanute. So let's see, is that right? No, I'd probably want to take that a little bit further north. Got that 78 right there. Yep, that's going to be our position pretty much along Interstate 70. So that's going to be the position of the surface low. 
And I do apologize for that amateur looking Microsoft Paint rendering. The high resolution rapid refresh is always worth a look in this type of weather regime. You can kind of track the evolution and you can see that it does not break out anything until 2122Z, but we've already got stuff going on. So I think the model here is running a little bit slow with the details, but ultimately it's got development of that stuff further west, which will be high based initially, and then it's looking for other development up there along the Kansas Nebraska border, maybe filling in to the southeast. And you can see a couple of convective complexes going on. Again, things may run faster than this. And you can see that meso low kind of wandering east northeast along Interstate 70. And it does look like these convective clusters generate a lot of outflow. Let's run that back and take a look at the proximity soundings. And I do see that the decapes are extremely high, 1500. So there is the potential to generate outflow dominant storms. However, considerable instability, very strong shear. And I think that this is not going for a hazard type, probably because of the cap strength. So what you want to do is grab a couple more soundings. Yeah, that still shows a pretty strong cap even as light as 1Z. But it's obvious that we've got plenty of forcing. Cap is a little bit weaker there up in Nebraska. And yeah, that's some very stout shear, SRH in the three to 500 range. So I think we are gonna see tornadoes today. So the next step is circling back to the satellite photo. These are inevitably going to spread into western Kansas and become a factor. The other development we're looking at is in these areas of the western edge of the moisture. And I think this right here is probably closer to initiation. We also see a lot of stability in the boundary layer due to the capping. That shows up as these transverse bands all across Kansas and up into Nebraska. And that's going to be associated also with cooler air in those regions. So the initial convection will be west of there, where we have this more vertical looking cumulus field. The vorticity and divergence product from SPC gives us an idea where the low level forcing is taking place. The shading, those browns and yellows, that's indicating the vorticity. And we're talking about rotation in the low levels. So that's going to mostly be around that mesolo there. And then the red colors, that's going to be the maximum convergence. We are focusing a couple of point convergence centers, one up there around Russell and the other out around Salina. So I think for the eastern targets, this will bear watching for development this afternoon. The moisture not really extending that far to the west. However, some of it is circling around the north side of that low. That's the moisture axis. The values of moisture are definitely better down around Salina, but those areas will continue to flow north during the afternoon and that will prime this area in a few hours. And it does look like in western Kansas, there is enough moisture around the backside. Those theta E's are up to 344 there, similar to Salina. So we need to go back to that surface chart and see exactly what's going on. I'm not really sure I'm seeing that in the data. I've got dew points here in the 50s. There is a data void in here. I guess there could be mid 50s dew points sitting right in here. But the other factor bringing up the theta E is probably the temperature. That does not have as much of a effect on theta E, not as much as moisture, but I guess the combination of strong heating and that low to mid 50s dew points is taking that ridge up a little bit, that ridge that we saw there. But I do think the better parcels are out here. And the winds in Nebraska, more backed, 
So that's going to be the better shear. Here you're working with a westerly component, and that's going to shorten the hodograph. And to show you what I mean here, yeah, that picks up that northwesterly flow there, and the hodograph is not quite as curved. There is some curvature there, certainly. So I'm not sure I can totally rule out tornadoes in western Kansas. There's the radar at this time out of Dodge City, high-based cells. And it does look like there are some boundaries in there. can certainly see some of that going on in the velocity data. And the clear air velocity, that's showing a west-southwest flow. The air wind flowing across the radar always flows from green to red. So that's going to be west-southwest winds. And the lack of curvature on that zero line indicates that there's not much shear at that location. Up at Topeka, certainly a different picture. You can see that curvature there. That's an indicator of directional shear. So in the low levels, we flow from green to red across the radar. That's indicating winds out of 150. And as we go higher, the winds become more southwesterly. And we're talking about 4,000, no, about 3,000 feet above the ground. And that's going to be the one kilometer level right there. So a lot of that curvature is focused in the lowest one kilometer. And also the fact that the higher velocities come really close to the radar indicates that we've got some fairly strong flow, even down near the surface. So we are looking at a busy afternoon, and I do want to wrap this up and get it posted as soon as possible. Let me give you the county overlays and the highways. It's going to look a little bit different by the time you're viewing the data, but definitely do that, and you can keep tabs on the evolution of this event. There's some new cumulus clouds. Those may head into the moisture field in the next couple hours, and that'll bear watching. So yeah, track this this afternoon and see how it develops and gradually switch over from the satellite to the radar to monitor what's happening. Anyway, I hope that gives you some educational information. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care and we will see you Monday here for the supporters and on Wednesday for everybody else. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.